Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial, and where am I? Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well here on a Saturday afternoon. And yes, this is Jason the Old Millennial uh, swinging to in my basement in the great state of Kansas. But you probably know a different background. That's because this is the um, new uh, house that um, my wife and I have moved into uh, this week anyways. And uh, we started this week uh, moving in and from my other house and same, we're in the same area. So we didn't move too far. So we haven't had to go too far, but yeah, uh, I am kind of setting up this area as my uh, area to do videos. I just kind of set this up a couple days ago. Anyway, so I got some posters on the wall, hopefully. I uh, got my, of course, Jason the Millennial uh, logo there. So some John Lennon, some ELO, some Paul McCartney. Anyway, so this is what I'm setting up right now uh, as my uh, YouTube area. Uh, hopefully it looks uh, okay. Anyway, so yeah, it's been quite a wild week and I still got a lot more to go. Uh, still need to get my computer desk and my uh, TV stand in here so I can set up all that. Uh, still got a lot of boxes on the floor, you know, still got a lot to do there, but uh, definitely this is my side of the basement that I've kind of got to make my own so far. So still got a lot more to move this next week. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll get it all done next week and uh, I can start making videos more often. But yeah, I definitely wanted to make one since I got the Wi-Fi going, uh, got my setup here and uh, talk a little bit more about uh, you know, trying to finish up my uh, Beatles uh, deep dive that I did a while ago because I did my top 10 favorite Beatles songs. Of course, I ranked every single Beatles song, actually. And then I decided to do a deep dive on the Beatles, but being such a big Beatles fan, uh, this is my fourth part of the, <laughs> the deep dive because I, I just know so much about them because I've been obsessed with them for, you know, 30 years of my life. And so I can kind of go off the top of my head, you know, all the details that I know. And to kind of explain, you know, what made the Beatles the Beatles, what were the big highlights, uh, kind of a little bit about their career, I guess, anyway. So this is the last part I'm going to go over. Um, and we've kind of finished the last time on, we're in 1968, so we're getting into 19, finishing 1968, getting to 1969, and then 1970 is when the Beatles broke up. So uh, that'd be the end of the, um, of the Beatles career, as far as that goes. Anyway, so when we're talking about 1968, I know last time I talked about you know, they did the White Album. Brian Epstein, their uh, manager, um, had committed suicide. So he was no longer, they no longer had a manager, which is a big blow to him at the time, even though they weren't touring anymore. Uh, the manager still, I think, helped direct the Beatles, you know, where to go and all that and manage things, of course, as, as the name um, says. And so um, at that point, it was hard because I felt like Paul McCartney really was starting to take over the Beatles at this point. Um, John was really the first leader of the Beatles. When you look at the Quarrymen, which was um, the band that John Lennon started, and Paul and George ended up uh, um, kind of joining. So it was really John's band, the Quarrymen, that uh, then became the Beatles. So John was always kind of the de facto leader, I guess, for most of the, the 60s. Um, but at this point, I feel like Paul McCartney definitely is kind of taking over a little bit more. Uh, coming up with more ideas, especially with no manager. He was kind of coming up with the ideas and all that. John, uh, he was, the problem with John is, of course, he's doing lots of drugs at this point. Uh, I think he was the biggest drug taker out of the four, I feel like. And so he was, uh, you know, not easy to deal with. He was on drugs a lot. And then him and Yoko at this point were, you know, a couple. He had uh, divorced his first wife, Cynthia. And um, I can't, at some point they get married, of course, him and Yoko. And um, so he's spending more time with Yoko. Yoko's coming into the studio, which is bothering the other Beatles. You know, they've never brought in a girlfriend or wife into the studio before. Now Yoko's, everywhere John goes, Yoko goes. They're like inseparable. And so it was a little annoying, I think, to the other Beatles. Um, you know, but John just wanted to spend more time with Yoko. I know he was just more interested in Yoko than being a Beatle, I think, and doing his own thing. And I think that eventually, of course, helped with the breakup, you know, him wanting to kind of go off and do his own thing, not really want to be part of the Beatles. But so that was going on. So I feel like Paul, who was really very much part of the Beatles uh, 
and wanted them to continue on. He was definitely coming up with ideas. He came, one of his ideas came up with, which was uh, making their own movie called Magical Mystery Tour, which they basically wrote and directed the, this movie. And the Beatles, the, the greatest band of all time, great songwriters, musicians, you know, not film directors, not film writers. They definitely, uh, as good as they are, they they weren't good enough to really go into that field as Paul, I think, thought they could. Anyway, so they came up with this movie, The Magical Mystery Tour, which really was a TV, made-for-TV movie that came off, I think, on the BBC, something like that. It wasn't, I don't believe it came out in the movie theaters or anything like that. Anyways, and it was just a wild script or wild ideas uh, kind of thrown together that they are playing these characters that are going on a bus trip and they're calling it the Magic Mystery Tour, of course. And they're going on just this bus trip to, I don't know, whatever. And then different musical numbers, you know, come about during the trip. And uh, there's all kinds of weird ideas thrown in there. And it just, it kind of ends kind of weirdly. Anyways, yeah, overall, terrible film. I've seen it a couple times. Yeah, really bad film. Messy script. I mean, obviously, the Beatles aren't good actors as well. And so none of it really works. Um... I think overall, and they put it on TV and it bombed. It like definitely was a bomb of a movie and considered the worst for sure. Uh, the only good thing is that it did give us some pretty good uh, musical numbers. Like I think I'm the Walrus is probably the best one uh, with them dressed up and doing the whole uh, kind of psychedelic song. That's a great sequence in the movie. I mean, you got Fool on the Hill is a great one. And also Magical Mystery Tour, the opener, great opener to the to the movie. So you got some good moments in there, but overall... Pretty bad film. Uh, they also put out the uh, Magical Mystery Tour. I think it's, what was it called? The EP, Extended Play, which uh, basically was all the songs. They didn't make a full LP album, but just made like, this, these kind of like singles or whatever, put together called Extended Play. And they had all the songs that were in the movie, basically. Um, in the US, they took all those songs. They made an LP out of it. They took all those songs on side one. Then side two, they added all the singles that were had come out that uh, pretty recently to that point. Uh, that hadn't been on any albums really, and so it became a really great LP. I mean, in the U.S. and uh, today, it's considered part of the canon, I believe, because um, at this point, U.S. we didn't get all the U.K. albums like "Please Please Me" with the Beatles. We didn't get those. We got "Meet the Beatles" and um, uh, Beatles' second album and all that. And so um, it wasn't until 1987 that they decided to uh, kind of make like the official like Beatles, you know album listing and and it's basically all the uk albums the 12 uk albums were basically the albums if you're a beatles fan and they and they mixed them all and they put them on you know cassette tape at that point in 1987 and so you can go get all the like remastered cassette tapes of all the british albums plus they added magical mystery tour the u.s album on there uh so there's 13 albums kind of in 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 uh, total that's kind of part of why i call the beatles like kind of canon that you listen to these and you don't listen to the u.s albums like meet the beatles and stuff like that they're kind of throwing kind of these extra albums on the side but saying that uh what the yeah i love what they did with the magical Mystery tour of course where they added on i mean they added penny lane strawberry fields all you need is love um uh and um, Hello Goodbye, which was a number one hit. And so the, the second side is absolutely amazing because it has all these great singles that they didn't put on the albums. And then the first side is, it's fine. There's some clunkers in there, I think, but you do got I'm the Walrus and Fool on the Hill and Magical Mystery Tour. So you got some good stuff. Overall, absolutely amazing album. One of my favorite Beatle albums, actually. Um, so yeah, that, they did some good stuff came out of it. Terrible movie. But um, going to 1969 now, um, and like I said, they had some management trouble, like they wanted to get a new manager. Um, uh, John Lennon, he kind of got uh, talked into by a guy named Alan Klein, who was, uh, I think, a manager of the Rolling Stones at one time, maybe. I can't remember, but all I know about Alan Klein, I don't know a lot, just that anytime you hear someone talk about Alan Klein, it's very negatively, like he was not a good person or um, did not do good business deals or kind of you know, not a person you want to be your manager, but he was a good, I think, salesman, maybe a good talker. And so he talked to John Lennon to hiring him as the Beatles manager, basically. And John Lennon talked to the other, uh, to George and I think Ringo got them on board, but Paul McCartney couldn't get on board. Paul McCartney kind of came up with another idea and that is have his wife, Linda, um, who was Linda Eastman, now it's Linda McCartney. 
he had her, I think her dad or something like that. Um, he's, he wanted him to be the manager of the band. Um, I think his name was like John Easton or something like that. And he was like, I think maybe a lawyer or something like that. And so he thought that he would have the ability to manage. Of course, the other three Beatles were like, why would we want your father-in-law managing us? He obviously would give you preference. You obviously would be in control of everything. If he's the manager, I mean, you would, you know, you're the son-in-law. So it doesn't seem fair to the other Beatles, you know. And I can totally understand what they're coming from. That sounds like a bad, uh, you know, nepotism idea, you know. Of, yeah, Paul McCartney's going to get all the ideas out there because his uh, father-in-law is the manager. But Paul McCartney really stuck to his guns and would not sign on with Alan Klein. So there's a, that was a lot of trouble. And there's all the stuff I don't really care to get into because there's all the financial part of it and uh, the business part of it, which I'm not interested in the business part. I'm more interested in the music part um, of the Beatles. But they had their own business, the Apple Company, um, that they started. And they started, you know, starting, with, I think, with the White Album. They were putting all their albums on the Apple label. And they had like a... a uh, a fashion store or whatever a clothing store that they started that really bombed and like bankrupt pretty quickly they also signed some other artists on to that they would kind of help produce uh like um james taylor was one of their early ones i mean which was pretty cool and, uh mary hopkins i think was another one and uh they had some other ones i think but so they're trying to produce and bring on other artists anyway so there's all this stuff going on a lot of business stuff and a lot of problems there I don't think they were good business owners. I don't think they knew how to run a business. Like again, great band, not so great maybe in other areas, understandably. But anyway, so that, all that stuff was going on, um, and then we get night sixty nine. Um, Paul McCartney comes up with this idea: let's do a whole album and a documentary where we shoot us uh, coming up with songs for the new album and rehearsing them, and then play them in a concert. Anyways, and we do it in two weeks or something like that which was a crazy idea. Like the Beatles are great, but not even the Beatles can write and arrange music and rehearse and do a concert in two weeks. That's just a lot to do. Anyways, of course they end up making this documentary, Let It Be. Um, and they made an album called Let It Be. And then later on, of course, a couple years ago, whatever, uh, Peter Jackson came out with the Get Back uh, sessions, uh, which really did a really good job, you know, really showing all the stuff that was going on and all the problems uh, that happened. Um, yeah, it didn't ha happen the way Paul was kind of uh, thinking. They went to a new studio and they weren't familiar. It was big, so it can hold, I think, more of the cameras and stuff and the crew to shoot the documentary. And I'm sure the Beatles, some of them didn't really care to be shot anyway, especially George. I don't think he cared about the whole, you know, being on camera and stuff. And... Um, and it was one of these things where Paul was trying to drive them to, hey, let's rehearse, let's hear, let's start this song, this this song. While, you know, especially John would come in late, I think, and he was a little more nonchalant. And Paul comes off kind of as a jerk because he's kind of like trying to corral everybody. But I think Paul was really just trying to, you know, get this thing going. Someone had to do it. They, hadn't, they didn't have a manager, really. And so he's trying to, uh, you know, corral everybody to, hey, we got to get this thing done. And so he looks uh, a little pushy, a little bossy. And anyways, and of course, we have a moment where George doesn't like any of it and quits for a couple of days. He quits the band. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to be a Beatle anymore. And so they had to talk to him. And then they had to make some changes. Uh, they had to delay everything. Uh, the two-week schedule kind of went out the window. And they end up going, I think, back to, um, to, uh, to Abbey Road Studios, you know, to finish it. Uh, somewhere where they're more used to and all that. And they did come out with some songs and they um, end up going on top of the roof, of course, and singing some of those songs. And uh, you can see all that in, you know, the documentary stuff anyways. So semi-disaster and the Beatles definitely were kind of breaking up at that point. Um, they, they didn't bring George Martin in, which is weird because George Martin produced all their albums up to this point and they decided to go somewhere different. First, they got like Jeff Emmerich, I believe, to... Uh, produce, but then they didn't like what he was uh, uh, what he was putting out. So then they got Phil Spector come in. Phil Spector was very famous for uh, this wall sound, you know, putting a lot of different instruments in and uh, his arrangements and stuff. And uh, Paul McCartney, of course, if you know, he was not crazy about Phil Spector's uh, what he did to the album. He hated it. Uh, eventually, Paul McCartney would come out with his own album much later called "Let It Be Naked," where he took all Phil Spector's stuff out of it. Anyways. 
Uh, like he had a lot of strings and stuff, especially to songs that Paul didn't want him. But anyway, so the, Phil Spector's working on it. So while he's working on that, uh, and they, it wasn't such a great, you know, making that album. So they finally went back to Jordan Martin and said, hey, let's make another album, but let's make it the old fashioned way, kind of uh, with you and all the, and George Martin basically said, I'll do it, but we have to do it my way kind of thing. So they, okay, yeah. So it's kind of like they want to do another album after Let It Be just because they had a bad experience with Let It Be and they want to have like one more good experience making an album. Uh, I mean, I guess they didn't know they're going to break up, but you kind of knew they were breaking up at that point, but, or you didn't know if that was the last album, but it's almost like, let's make one more, you know, good album before we're through, it felt like. And so they came up with uh, uh, stuff that I guess that they're working on with Let It Be. Uh, it's basically some extra stuff because you can see Paul McCartney working on uh, Maxwell Sw Maxwell Sil Silver Hammer, sorry, Maxwell Silver Hammer while uh, doing the Let It Be documentary or the Get Back session. So that was an, a song that he thought was going to be like a big hit. It seems like that maybe would have came off the album, but it got left off, off that album. Came on the Abbey Rhodes album. Anyway, so we get that. Anyway, so they work on the Abbey Rhodes album uh, here in 1969 uh, with George Martin. And of course, it's considered one of the greatest albums of all time. Uh, it's a you know masterpiece. Uh, George comes out with some, his best material with uh, "Here Comes the Sun" and "Something." I mean, just absolutely amazing songs. In fact, "Something" uh, is the A side single that comes out, that, and it's the first time George Harrison got an A side single um, with the Beatles, and obviously amazing song. Something um, you got "Come Together" is amazing. Um, and then the, the the second side is the big medley thing that they have, which everybody loves about the medley, you know. Uh, each song kind of ties into each other and kind of really transitions well until you get to the very last song, basically the end, which is like, what a great way to end the the last album, basically, of the Beatles. The last time they're recording together is to do a song called The End, anyways. So yeah, so they come out with Abbey Roads. They put that out. Of course, huge hit, number one, and all that. Um, Let It Be still hasn't come out yet, even though they recorded that first, it's still being worked on basically at that point. So, uh, even though, um, Abbey Rhodes is the last album they worked on, they produced whatever and put out, or if, last one that they worked on basically. And, uh, it was actually put out though before Let It Be. So, um, anyway, so that, that's kind of getting to the end of 69. Um, obviously there's been a lot of trouble within the Beatles, like, like I said, especially with the managers, who's going to be the manager, and Paul doesn't want this manager, and they don't want this manager, and there's a lot of infighting at this point. Um, though Paul still was thinking that the Beatles were going to go on, they basically have a meeting at some point, and John basically tells Paul, like, it's over, like, uh, the Beatles are over, you know. And it was pretty devastating to Paul at that point, because I think he still had some hope that they would keep going on. I guess he still liked being a Beatle, I feel like. I feel like Ringo still wanted to go on. I think George wanted to quit too. I think George wanted to go on and do his own thing, get out of the shadow of Lennon McCartney. And like I said, Lennon wanted to just go out and be with Yoko and do his own thing, do drugs and party and whatever, you know, and uh, and make his own solo work, you know. And so, yeah, so there's a point where they just all kind of decided, yep, yeah, that was the end of the Beatles. And uh, it kind of broke up at that point. Paul McCartney was the first one to actually say it because a, a reporter, you know, went to, or a journalist or somebody asked him about it. And Paul had this weird thing about if you get asked a question, he'll tell you honestly, even though uh, he probably should just keep quiet. Uh, and so he is one that says uh, that, yeah, he's quitting the Beatles. So uh, it's like officially Paul McCartney is the first one to quit the Beatles, but really I think John was the first one. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. And I'm sure John didn't like the fact that Paul was the first one to quit and be like, hey, I was the one that quit first, you know, <laughs> uh, all that. But anyway, so that, now we're getting to 1970. And so the Beatles are basically broken up. Let It Be is still coming out, though. So Let It Be comes out and it's another big hit. Uh, again, absolutely a fantastic album. I mean, Let It Be, the song, is one of the greatest songs of all time. Huge hit for them. Uh, you also have, you know, Get Back. Uh, it was the number one hit, I believe, for them. Uh, Long Winding Road, I think, is a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite songs. Um, Two of Us, really good. But yeah, overall, great album. Great way to finish the career, in my opinion, either with Abbey Roads or Let It Be, whichever one you want to say is the last album. But basically, Let It Be comes out in 1970, basically after they break up. And even at that point, uh, they're all working on solo albums that come out in 1970, with Paul coming out with McCartney, John Lennon coming out with Plastic Ono Band, 
George coming out with All Things Must Pass, and I think Maringo might have came out with an album. I'm not as familiar with this stuff. But anyways, so they're already putting out stuff. And at the same time, they're supposed to promote and let it be, yet they're not getting along. It was, it was kind of an interesting moment. Let Be does go on to win like an Oscar, I think, for Best Score or something like that, and is somewhat successful. Maybe, I think, got nominated for like Best Documentary or whatever. Um, anyway, so that's basically the end of uh, the Beatles' career. From, I mean, of course, like I said, they started way back in like 1957 and basically in 1970 in some sense. Um, of course, they would all go on to have, or at least most of them would go on to have you know, pretty successful solo careers. Uh, Paul McCartney goes on, he gets, uh, he has another band he calls Wings in the 70s and has a lot of great hits, you know, Span on the Run is one of my favorite uh, albums of all time. Ram, of course, was also pretty big. Um, John Woodcut, like I said, the Plastic Bone Band, and then Imagine, I think, is an absolute, it's an amazing album. I think it's his best, and he does some other ones like Mind Games and all this um, in the 70s, you know, and... Uh, uh, George, really, All Things Must Pass is like the biggest thing he ever did. And he did some other albums that are okay, like Cloud Nine, and uh, I'm forgetting other ones, but uh, the concert for Bangle Dash was huge for George, you know, the big concert he put on. Uh, and Ringo, he would go on and he would do some albums and he had some hit songs in there. Um, well, the big thing for him is at one point, they kind of came with this idea that they'd get um, members from other bands. And they would call it the All-Star Band anyways. And I've seen Ringo in the All-Star Band live uh, back in 2018. And it was fun. It was great. And it was great seeing uh, Ringo singing and all that. So, And he's still doing that. Last time I knew, he was still doing Ringo in the All-Star Band, uh, which is still a pretty good show. Uh, of course, John uh, tragically would die in 1980. Um, December, I believe, 1980, getting um, gotten shot and murdered. Uh, unfortunately, walking back to his house, I believe, with Yoko from the studio. And one of the biggest, you know, shocks of all time, biggest, you know, tragic deaths we've ever had, you know, and uh, still just crazy that happened, that we don't get any more John Lennon after 1980. Um, after just coming out with uh, Double Fantasy, actually just comes out right after that, um, which is almost kind of like his comeback album, because he kind of disappeared from making albums for a little while. And then he decided to come back and he made Del Fancy, which would win like the Grammy album of the year. Huge hit, of course, because he just passed away. But, uh, you know, and we never got to see the Beatles come back together. That's the big saddest, one of the saddest things that is that, you know, you think that at some point in the 1980s, you know, because at this point, Lynn McCartney was starting to get back together. Because uh, Lynn McCartney, they had, uh, you know, like I said, uh, they were not getting along um, during the early part of the 70s anyways, um, after their breakup. Uh, some things were said, they're still fighting, they're suing each other over, you know, the music, I think, and over the, you know, management and all that. And uh, even George and Paul did not get along, they never collaborated again. Ringo would get along with all three and collaborate with all three on, on their albums or on his album. Uh, you know, George would collaborate with John, you know, sometimes and all that. And John would write a song for Ringo or Paul would write a song for Ringo. So there's still some stuff going on, but unfortunately they never sing um together again you know which is very very sad and you know too bad we never got that obviously when john died that was the end of the beatles for sure you never again get a reunion uh, without john there uh i believe george passed away around 2001 of cancer um so we lost the second beetle which is crazy that's over 20 years ago i think when he died that was 2000 2001 i think when he died and so yeah we lost him so we still got paul and ringo who are in their 80s now and Paul's still making music last time, at age 80, still came out with an album, McCartney 3. And I think Ringo's still out there doing stuff. So incredible that they're still out there making music, still doing concerts. I saw Paul McCartney in 2017, greatest concert I've ever seen in my life. So uh, yeah, those still Beatles are still alive as long as those two are alive. I mean, obviously when they're gone, we're always Beatles will always be around because there's always going to be huge Beatles fans. But definitely when they die, it's going to be like, that's the end of the Beatles for sure. Because at least you can still hear them sing the Beatles songs, you know, somewhat. Anyways, but yeah. So yeah, that's my deep dive on the Beatles Part 4. This is the last one. Uh, please uh, just, yeah, let me know what you think about uh, the Beatles, I guess, if you haven't already. And what you think of these deep dives. I'd uh, love to read your thoughts and about my new place and <laughs> new background. Hopefully it looks good. And just thank you to everybody that's watching this video for liking it. And thank you to all my subscribers for supporting the channel. 
I appreciate you all and I hope you're happy.